It's now been six months since the last circuit has been added to Grand Turismo 7. Earlier in the game's life, circuits were essentially being added on a bi-monthly basis. Of course, the rate of updates is going to slow down as the game ages, and I also recognise it's a huge task for developers to add brand new circuits. However, to keep the content coming, in those early days, Polyphony were also adding variations of existing circuits. Examples being the Rallycross layout of Catalonia or the Nürburgring GP Sprint Course. But there still are plenty more layouts of circuits that we already have in Gran Turismo 7 that we can't currently use. And today we're going to look at some of those. And in the case of all but one of these tracks, they've in fact never been used in the entire Gran Turismo franchise. Let's begin. Kicking us off, we have the Bugatti circuit at Le Mans. A much shorter layout at 2.6 miles, it's also a much more technical one though, skipping out the famous Mulsanne straight, and in fact most of the 24 hour circuit. Only the first sector of the lap and the final corner are shared between the two layouts. As such, it would present a unique challenge, and as a circuit has an identity all of its own. It would also be suitable for various types of vehicles, as the track in the real world hosts everything from cycle races, through motorbikes, open wheelers, and perhaps my favourite, as you can see on screen here, a round of the European Truck Racing Championship. What a sight, honestly. Our second pick is a much more simple one, the Monza Junior course. Comprising of only four turns, the lap begins in the usual place before turning right before the chicane to go through a technical tight section before heading right back on to the back straight. And then all that's left is to navigate the parabolica and the lap is complete. Good for beginners, but high speeds are also achievable here. This layout could bring some pretty unique racing, plus being able to skip out the usual Monza Turn 1 shenanigans has always got to be a good thing, right? The Suzuka West Circuit is a rarity on this list because it's been in Gran Turismo before, in GT4 and GTPSP. Why it disappeared is a mystery to me, as it's a great track. The lap starts on the back straight and you're immediately confronted with turn 1, the infamous 130R. The track then cuts out the final chicane and the S's from the first section of the main course, before joining back right before the two Degna turns. Then tackle the hairpin, the spoon curves, and the lap is complete. I'm sure I'm not alone in preferring this layout to the East course that Gran Turismo has used pretty heavily, particularly for low level events in recent times. So here's hoping it does return soon. Road Atlanta is the most recent addition to Gran Turismo on this list, and happens to be one of my favourites too. In fact, it's now the circuit I use to benchmark cars. Check out the video linked down below if you want to see more of that. But I digress. The short course here retains all of the main challenges of the full layout, namely the snaking, undulating first sector, before cutting out the middle part of the lap and heading down the hill for the chicane and that hair-raising final corner. The most famous and the longest track in the world, the Nürburgring. But did you know about its shortest layout, the sub one mile Mullenbach Schleifer? Named after the local town, a lap of the layout starts midway through the GP course, rounding the hairpin at the bottom before heading up to the Schumacher S and then slamming on the brakes for a tight section to rejoin the second sector of the full GP circuit. It's a short lap, 
but again could be surprisingly versatile. Also like the Monza Junior course, I remember driving this back in the days of Need for Speed Shift. Good times. Our final proper track on this list is the Sakuba 1000 circuit, of course named for its length of 1km. It's actually entirely separate from the main 2km layout of Sakuba and is much more technical. Packing 11 corners into that short distance, this would work really well for time trials, drifting or even kart races. The Gran Turismo shifter carts are mental enough on the main Sakuba layout when you have a lobby full of them, so who knows what hilarity would ensue on this version. Now this technically rounds out our list, but I do have one wild card, and it is another one that has shown up in the franchise before. Yes, the Goodwood Hill Climb made its debut in Grand Turismo 6 and had its own special event dedicated to it. Yet after that game, it disappeared. Since then we've gained the Goodwood Motor Circuit in GT Sport and of course carried over to GT7, but is it not too much to ask to have them both at once? Oh, and why not throw in the Forest Rally stage while you're at it, eh, Polyphony? Anyway, that is going to be it for this list. Let me know if you have any ideas, and thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.